Okay. Welcome back, Mike. Yeah, I think we're okay. You came back in one piece from your trip. Yes. Yes. That's always a good thing. I'm so relieved. So <laughs> you can conduct the interviews. We've got uh, quite a feedback problem back there. That's not the right lower third, but okay. Well, we've got one guy in the back who's somewhat of a amateur doing <laughs> this stuff <laughs> students then happen to show up as they should have so we're just winging it this is exposition as you saw in the uh, the beginning and today well this is a show that uh, features artisans uh, from Southeast Ohio and today we're featuring Beth Ruff who is a uh, weaver a loomer a weaver and what do loomer weavers people kind of do they rugs and I guess yes. you could do shirts and well you could weave anything right? you can weave everything hair and fabrics weave a good yarn you can which is be a story we can weave a good story we could do that yeah, yeah. okay so I'd like to welcome Beth Ruff yay Beth Ruff go to camera two <laughs> there, there she we go. is <laughs> Well, I hope I can clear up exactly what a weaver does. Thank you. Since sure. you guys seem to be a little bit confused. Wow. <laughs> well, they, I think it's yes, a, a, a broad area, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I um, have a small business called the Loom Room, and um, I've been weaving for about 30 years and um, decided here in the last three years to make it, uh, to take my passion and make it a small business. So that's what I've been doing. That's uh, awesome and amazing and we're so happy to be associated with you, <laughs> that's for sure. Sorry, I just took a, a little run. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Running audio. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Double duty. Okay, so how long have you been doing this? Did I miss that? Um, well, I, actually, I'm a retired school teacher. So I taught, taught for 35 years, and I have started weaving since I retired. And I retired three years ago and created the business, The Loom Room. And everyone in my family had a rug. You know, they always got that as a wedding gift or a uh, shower gift. So I thought, you know what, it's time to start selling my product. So you were doing this as you were As teaching? I was teaching, uh-huh. Just as a little hobby? Yep. For Absolutely. family presents yes. and things like what that. What got you interested in that? Well, when uh, I first got married, I, um, my husband and I received a rag rug for a wedding gift. And I just thought that it was absolutely beautiful. And it was woven by one of our local weavers here in Gallia County, oh. uh, Jerry Gibson. And um, so I saved my money. And I think I painted a few basements to buy my first loom. Hmm. And uh, so that's where it all began. Wow, and w there's so many things that you weave. I know you do the, all the different, you, not just rugs. What else do no, you weave? No, not just rugs. Um, I've brought a few things here. Um, this actually, um, I refurbish old rugs. So this particular um, rug was uh, an old rug, oh. and um, the fibers. You mean like you would have in your like living some, room something your great grandmother or something that was brought you know come down from your family and um, so I refurbished it made it into a table table runner because I absolutely did not want to be walking on this yes. mm. but as I tore it apart there was uh, you know the early Americans they when they they fixed their fibers to weave they would just have little tiny scraps of material and uh, so I wanted to make sure that that, you know, 
that we didn't walk on that. So this is a mm -hmm. table runner. Wow. So that's actually an antique. That yes, you... that that is. So I do refurbish old rugs. Okay. So don't throw away your grandmother's rugs. Yes, call ba Beth. <laughs> yeah. Beth. Beth Ruff. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> So where did you learn how to do this? I, I am actually a self-taught weaver and oh um, I just go to the library and get books and I watch videos. I actually buy a lot of books and I watch YouTube and uh, so I've just kind of taught myself to do that. I do have some um, like um, I've had different weavers to show me different techniques and, hmm. and things so. What's the hardest part about figuring out how to do this kind of thing? Well probably for me um, Probably the hardest part is making a really costly mistake because the strings, to buy the string is very uh, expensive, to buy the yarns are very expensive. So when you, when you make a big mistake, you've lost that. What constitutes what, a mistake? What would be? Um, it just becomes a tangled mess, let's just say that. Oh. <laughs> and you can't untangle it. Oh, so. so you just have to cut it apart yes, and start over? Yes, you just over. have to cut it out and, and start again, absolutely. Oh, wow. hmm. oh, and hopefully that's at the beginning and not at the end. Right, right. And so what kind of materials do you use? Do you uh, have like natural fibers? All, or? all different kinds of fiber. Um, this particular um, scarf yes. um, was... Uh, Actually, I bought the yarn. Well, I, I traded a rug. I was at the Pawpaw Festival, and a hoofing, uh, Hauling Hoof Farm was there, and they have sheep, and they actually shear the sheep, and then they dye the, dye the yarns. And so I traded a rug for the actual yarn. So I know it was going from animal right to my product. Mm -hmm. So this is 100% wool. Wow. Um, so that's one fiber that I use. Um, another fiber that, um, that I've done now, this is done on what's called a rigid heddle loom, which is a little bit different. But um, this is baby alpaca. Hmm. And feel it, it's really soft. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Is that different than the uh, adult alpacas? You know, I don't know. <laughs> this, <laughs> that one I don't know. It's actually 50% alpaca and 50% wool. Hmm. So it's... Oh. So with the wool or alpaca, what's the, the care that you would put into that since it's not like a man-made material? Um, actually, after I weave it, I hot felt it or hot, you know, I put it in hot water mm -hmm. so that it shrinks. And Ooh. I know the first time I did that, it scared me to death. Oh. But then after that, you would just wash it in cold water. Now, is that hot water, did you say you put it in? At, yeah, after and you weave it. And yeah, and then you it? never use that again. You never put it in hot water. Because that shrinks and locks mm -hmm. all the fibers? It locks all the fibers, yes. You know the terminology? That's I get around. Wow. <laughs> How cool. <laughs> so I have three huge floor looms, and um, each of those looms um, I've just bought throughout the years. I bought my first loom, like I said, I'd saved my money. I think it was in 1987. Um, then I bought a four harness loom, and um, then re actually I bought that loom off of eBay. And then my third loom I just recently purchased, and it's also a four harness loom. Are these new? Uh, only my first one was new. These okay. are used looms. Is Would they be the, antique or just used? Just used. Okay, so it's not from like 1900 or no. something. No, but uh, interestingly, looms have not changed. Mm -hmm. So you could buy an antique loom and, you know, produce all kinds of different things on it. and. You know, they haven't really changed at all. Yeah. Back in the old days, they used a lot of child labor. I guess you don't do that, right? <gasps> no, I try to stay away from child labor. <laughs> Does it matter if it's newer or older loom? Is there like a, a weathering or a, um, a breaking in or anything like no, that? Oh, no. no. Uh -uh. It no. just, a loom's a loom. A loom is a loom, absolutely. Okay. And it's not motorized. It's all... It's hand. all hand. It's motorized. It's all hand by done. Beth Ruff. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Beth Powered. <laughs> Beth Powered. So um, I do try different fibers, uh, meaning I try different um, things that I can weave. This in particular, I wove um, grocery sacks. 
Um, I am a green business, so I try to recycle or upcycle as many products mm -hmm. as I can. And a lot of people buy these for what we call festi mats or yoga mats, or hmm. we uh, a lot of people take them camping. So this is a real popular uh, product that I sell a lot at different festivals. And How such. much would that cost? Um, well, I'll have to put a tag on it. Okay. This is sixteen dollars. Oh, okay. As compared to the same thing in wool, wool would be like a hundred dollars or more. Um, actually, the fiber that I use, I just charge so much an inch, so it really doesn't matter. Since I upcycle, uh, meaning I might buy a um, bunch of wool, uh, wool skirts, like it. Uh, so would that cost the same as your wool stuff? Uh, yeah, it's basically about the same. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I These thought maybe great. this would be more disposable because it's a man-made recycled material. Uh, no, not ju just because I upcycle. Now, if I went out and bought wool fabric and actually used new fabric, yes, mm -hmm. that would cost more. Okay. But uh, my cost is still about the same. Okay. We've used this at concerts. <laughs> yeah. Kind yes. Sit around on the grass. Mud, yes. Muddy. Kind yeah. of a sit -upon. outdoor. Yes, it is. And then I have. Um, now I told you that I had um, oh, yeah. purchased a four harness loom and this oh is God. all the same um, color, the same fabric, but then there, you, there you see I've used the pattern. You can see the pattern in the string. Well, what is this? It's, this was done on a four harness loom and it, the pattern's called Anderson weave. Now the harness, what you're talking about. It's the strings that go up and down. Which would be four on top of each other, and you would move them all separately? Well, let's just say that I have pedals, and I can manipulate four different okay. strings. And these are the strings that go this direction. Yes, uh-huh. That's called your warp, and the ones going across are called your weft. Hmm. Warp and weft. Mm -hmm. You knew that, didn't you, Mike? <laughs> I've heard it. I didn't really know it. So and this is way. this is a really old pattern. She needs to come this way. I'm I'm gonna drag you this way oh, okay. a little bit. Okay. Yeah. This is a really old pattern and it was highlighted in some of the old loom books, this particular pattern. So this has been a long around for a long time. What's that called? Anderson pattern. Okay. Or the Anderson. It seems very weave. sturdy, very mm -hmm. thick and tight. Now would that be like a family pattern, sort of like a you know, th that is a good question. I don't know how much that is the same as tartans. You know, the yes, I, I, tartan plaids. Right. Yeah. Because we're Celtic. Because, no, right. no, it yeah. wouldn't be. It wouldn't be like a tartan. I know like that's a family, not a tartan. But, but um, I know that they were highlighted in um, old manufacturing loom books. Hmm. And sometimes some of the older looms, uh, well, in particular, I was thinking of the Newcomb loom. Um, came with this pattern already warped on the loom for you. Oh my goodness. So is that the way you manipulate the loom or is that the way it's threaded, kind of? Both. So I, the way I thread it and then the way I tie it up and manipulate it. So I could do a completely different pattern with this same threading. It just depends on how I'm working the petals on the hmm. loom. A little bit more complicated than what I thought. Well, you it's know, amazing. I, I am learning to read drafts, different drafts, because I am a lifelong learner. Mm -hmm. So um, I have recently learned to read some drafts, and um, I'm kind of able to see how that draft. Is that sort of like the punch card of the loom? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Absolutely. I don't know if you remember punch cards from the old computer days. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I and, uh, do. And maybe sort of like the uh, all those the bands oh. that used to play. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Like uh, a player piano. Right. That right. Kind of thing. I don't know oh. if that's kind of a, it's yes. sort of its program. Yes. I know yeah. what you're saying. I hear you talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what do we got here? Okay, so um, the Ooh, last, yeah, pretty. this is, um, oh, I am very, I love to weave color. So you can see That's that this gorgeous. is a, um, kind of a cheerful pattern. It is a lot of color. Um, and it has a pattern here. These, I don't know if you can see the, see the pattern. I'll hold it up there, but this is called turkey tracks. Mm -hmm. 
just and like one to the next mm -hmm. left right yeah left, right. you can see the the purple mm -hmm. and um i could not find how to do turkey tracks i mean i looked in all my books i got on youtube looked for how to do turkey tracks and i finally figured out that there was an Amish lady down the road that was doing turkey tracks, oh. and she was a weaver. And hmm. so I spent a couple days with her, wow. and uh, Martha taught me how to do turkey tracks. I love Martha. Yeah, well, I do too. <laughs> so uh, I, now I have a turkey track uh, YouTube video. And you didn't so learn it from the turkeys. I, I did not learn it from the turkeys. But no. <laughs> I learned no. it from Martha. They're not very helpful. <laughs> Their brains are small. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, what's the uh, oh fabric? Or this the is a hundred percent cotton. That's so beautiful. And I just that can you that one? Can you throw it in the the wash? You can throw all of these rugs um, into the washer. Um, I do have washing instructions when you probably purchase. cold. It would be cold, and you just agitate it for no longer than four minutes, and make sure it's a full load. Hmm. And um, you can wash them, hang them over your porch railing to dry, and just to make sure that they kind of hang and don't get warped. Absolutely. Not confusing yeah. with the other use of you. I'm warped. very confused now. I just can't keep that straight. <laughs> well, I was really hoping I would uh, be able to unconfuse you. I mean, I know. <laughs> it's the voice in my head. What's the what's the most simple? loom you could get it's just like two of those uh, yeah that's called a two harness loom and that was th actually the very first loom that i got was a uh, two harness loom yeah, if somebody wanted to get into that how much is that how much does that um cost? if you bought a new one a new two two harness loom would probably run you about eight hundred dollars how um, wide is that it would weave up to about 45 inches on the wow. on the width so they're they're very large looms um, they stand about four to five feet. I mean, they're really big. Hmm. Um, and then your four harness would probably be about a thousand if you were buying them new. Right. Um, the looms that I have, I always try to purchase used. Is that eBay? Or? eBay, the, the second loom I bought, I bought off of eBay and um, I made sure that the that it was still being made, so I could get parts. But to buy that loom new was about twenty three hundred. It wow. was out of Canada, and um, I got it for like three hundred dollars. So, is there expendable parts you would use, or stuff that you'd have to remake? No, no. Uh -uh. I mean, things generally don't wear out. Do they just? They break? generally do not break. But if they do, you've always got. There's different places that you can get loom parts and. Hmm. Do you, are there places around here? Well, you not close. Use, There's, I order a lot of my things from Van Wert, Ohio. Mm -hmm. okay. um, another place is in Michigan. but um, Is that in the area of Amish country, I guess, or not? I, I don't know. Okay. I think the looms that they sell, they sell a, Har a Harrisville loom. No, I'm sorry, a Leesburg loom. And I think they are built by the Amish. Now... The loom can still make, like, fabrics, right? Right. You know, mm -hmm. thinner and lighter and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Is that the same loom that you would use for what you're doing, or is that just the type of material you're inputting into the loom? Both. The looms that I have are <laughs> typically meant for rag rugs or rugs. Okay. But I could make cloth. As a matter of fact, my next project that I'm, I'm getting ready to make is um, baby wraps, which are uh, cloth used to, to oh. kind of wear babies is what oh. they call it. And, yeah. Yeah. So I already have uh, three people interested in baby wraps, so Wonderful. that's my next project is oh to learn gosh. how to, to weave like thinner thread. and. Mm -hmm. How wonderful. Yeah. It's like the baby sling kind of. Yeah, yes, oh uh -huh. a baby sling. Yay. Do, are you going to show us that cool thing over there on the oh, stand? Oh, I almost forgot all about that. Don't, <laughs> don't fall off the platform. Okay. I'm holding your chair. <laughs> okay, I'll have to, I'll turn it. Turn it this oh, way. Oh, okay. There does we that, go. Does that work? Okay, yeah. Okay, this is, um, 
I, ju I brought this loom today because I knew it was something that maybe would fit on the table. Yes. This is called an inkle loom. And um, what, what you do, and I don't, I don't know if you can see the pattern. I'm going to tilt it just a little bit. It's right here. Right, right in through here. But I make... Let's turn um, it this way. I make... Um, is this like pet, a belt or something? Oh, well, in this case, this is a pet collar. Oh, wow. Is what I'm making. Okay. And, I um, love the colors. I kind of combined. You don't norm always use these cards, but this is tablet weaving up here. And as I turn the cards, it opens up different strings, and I, I push my shuttle through there and create this pattern here. Now are you just moving these up and down? I'm turning the whole group, group of cards. Flipping them mm -hmm. like this? Yeah. Well, I flip the whole group like that. Like I turn them. Turn them oh, like I see. That. Okay. Yeah, I gotta take it back to where I was so I don't mess up where I'm at. Right. Yeah. So this is called an inkle loom. And this probably wouldn't cost too much, would it? Um, I think they. I bought mine there again. I bought mine used. Mm -hmm. I think they run about a hundred dollars. Um, I think I paid maybe forty dollars for this. Wow. Happy. So. Well, it's. Not polished, polished. I wasn't no. sure how yeah, much you it would. Yeah, you could you could make one really mm -hmm. simply. Yeah, that's I'm very sure there's cool. probably plan, plans out there for them. Oh, I'm sure. There I'm always are. a do-it-yourselfer kind yeah. of. Yeah, yeah. So I guess you could make. Could you make a scarf on that? I guess you could. Um, no, this is just basically for straps. Oh, okay. Like belts and different straps. Hmm. Um, the the scarves um, and this one with the twisted fringe. Um, these, these were made by a rigid heddle loom, which is kind of like a small table loom. You can do different things, so. So if you're going to get into this thing very much, you're going to need a large room. You need a large room. Um, I actually, uh, in our home, I moved my first loom into the living room. Um, we did have a family room, and uh, then I moved my second loom into the living room. And I know Valerie's been to uh, my house. No, you don't have a living room? I do not have a living room. <laughs> it is called the loom room. The loom okay. room. The loom room. So uh, It's awesome. They're yeah. just looms. <laughs> looms everywhere. <laughs> so yes. I, it's, I call it my sweatshop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we had a video. Do we want to show the video? Oh, yes. Yes, we do. I think it's the last thing on there and put it on DDR1. And we won't forget about talking about the Fiber Guild. Oh, no. No. I gotta make sure I. Yes, oh. and the purse and everything. Is he so getting ready? Okay, I just what? have one last there we go. thing. Oh, okay. And then we'll do that one. Yeah. So, um, some people do ask for fringeless rugs. I do do that. And I also make Ohio State scarves, which were very popular last Christmas. Hmm. We do a fringe, a twisted fringe, and then there you can see the log cabin pattern. And I do love working with color. It's beautiful. And there's the turkey tracks that Martha helped me with. Mm -hmm. Oh, a fanny pack. We've done fanny packs and our, our tote bags. I have one of each of those. Mm -hmm. And then there's an Anderson Weave rug that we're showing. And I always try to put some kind of tag on it. There's our pet collars. Is it just normal be uh, like a belt type of a class? Yeah, the plastic, just like the kind you buy. I try to put that. And there's our plastic grocery sack Yay. rugs and more table runners with a tie the knot fringe. That's kind of a cool ending on that. Mm -hmm. And more turkey tracks. And there's the Anderson weave. Oh, that's a nice one. I like that. I use a lot of blue jeans uh, to do blue jean rugs. That's a Danish medallion. Hmm. Well, how would you use a blue jean? Well, we use that as the fabric, what we uh, weave into it. We take blue jeans and cut them up into strips. And Very small strips. Pretty small, about an inch wide. Oh. Yeah. 
I know you couldn't like take the threads out of it, girl. So these are all custom rugs I've made. There's your there's a couple of rooms, and there's the little room. Oh, yes, sir. look at that! Here's the kids working. That's my eBay loot in there. Hmm. Nice. Well, it keeps you out of the bars and stuff. I absolutely. <laughs> my husband is so glad that I now have a hobby. <laughs> an eBay. That That's keeps you at home. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Yeah. That's quite a hobby business. So, uh, oh, show your show, show your purse. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Right. So, um, like I said, we are a green business, and uh, you were asking me about blue jeans. Mm -hmm. So, what I did here was to w actually weave the fabric, and I used the belt on the or not the belt, but the the, the waist waistband jeans. of the two pairs of blue <laughs> jeans connected. Hmm. That's where they connect, and made the strap. And then, of course, I have the back pocket. Oh, they're wonderful! With and all the pockets. I have pockets on the inside. Wow! So that's our um, blue jean tote. Yay! Okay. I think I we've got some uh, uh, contact information. Do you buy? Can you buy these online or only yes. at shows or what? Yes, I do have a website. It's the Loom Room Rough. Rough dot com. And on that, it also has my email address. That, okay, uh, that's roughweaver. Yes, uh huh. At gmail.com. Yes. And at the Artisan Shop downtown in the oh, Beth Square Mall. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we have Beth's things there. And um, What's the hours of the Artisan Shop if you want to find stuff 12 there? 12 to 6 on Thursday and Friday, and 10 to 4 on Saturday. And we're downtown at the Lafayette Square Mall at the corner of Court Street and 2nd Avenue, and we have Beth's wonderful, beautiful, amazing creations there. And, and then the Fiber, oh, I just, I'm sorry, the Fiber Guild, I wanted to mention. Oh, right, quick. yeah. Beth's oh. a member of the Fiber Guild. Yes, and we meet out at Rio Grande, um, I think on the third Sunday of each month, it's at 2 o'clock, and it's for all kinds of fiber artists. Hmm. There's crocheters, knitters, a um, couple weavers, so. Yay! That sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. How long are they doing the, uh, like, a farmer's artisan market thing? Are you in the park anymore during the You know what? Market? We're trying to figure that out, when the last day is. Yeah, um, I wasn't sure it, when. It's this month, so we October? may be. October? Yes. So it should be ending soon on Saturdays. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for watching Exposition. And next month on the 2nd week you'll find a new type of artisan that we'll be featuring here so thanks for watching and see you next month see ya